Shall I go ahead? No, it's, uh, it's time. We, we good? Okay. Uh, hi, my name's David Malcolm. I work at Red Hat and I've worked on various different things there. Uh, I'm a relative new, well, I am a newcomer to GCC. I've only been working on it a few months, but I, I am the author of the Python plugin for GCC. Um, so I'm about to say exactly why, what I think to completely rewrite the insides of GCC. Hi, um, so I probably should say who I am. Um, so yeah, the Python plugin and um, is, is basically my main contribution to GCC yeah. so far. Um, so this talk is all about um, trying to remove all the global variables from GCC's insides. Um, and, um, and so basically it's a major change. It would involve touching pretty much every source file in GCC. Um, this is merely a summary. I wrote a 20,000 word design doc, um, which I, I sent a link to to the mailing list rather than that. And I've been sending various patches over the last few months with ideas, but people were saying, well, can we see the bigger picture? So which is why I was trying to give the bigger picture in that document. And of course, it's the too long didn't read. Um, so hopefully this talk will give people more of a sense of, of my ideas and what I think, um, how I think we could go about um, getting rid of some of the globals inside GCC. And um, I guess the question is, why would you want to do it? Well, I would say, ooh, uh, uh, why would you want to do it? Well, I could say modularity, and there's a whole bunch of um, potentially information hiding things, but really, I, my, my secret interest is GCC is a shared library, and the ability to embed a compiler inside a, 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 another process, another ac application, is, I think, extremely useful. And it's one area where a certain other um, compiler um, project is basically <laughs> is killing us, um, and um, and specifically um, being able to embed a compiler tool chain so that you can do just-in-time compilation, JIT comp compiling of say inside a, a, a Python interpreter, a Ruby interpreter, uh, a JavaScript, and being able to um, have the we have a, a very very powerful com um, body of compiler code and the ability to be able to use that inside another application. And, and so one of the issues with that is because we've just got lots and lots of globals, there's a, lots, there's a big set of initialization in toplev.c, and a lot of stuff never really gets cleaned up. Um, how would, why would you do that? As well as language runtimes, for example, an OpenGL2 has a shading language, and so a, a 3D driver has to support basically a compiler internally, um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, also, I'm, I'm interested in doing static analysis, and I've kind of been able to get somewhere with that with, with plugins, but I'd like to take that further using GCC's code um, and documentation generation. It's basically all the kind of use cases where um, you want to be able to just have a compiler as a library. Um, but um, so that's kind of my motivation, my main, my main motivation wanting to do that. I could say modularity, but frankly, it's. Um, it's, it's GCC as a shared library. Um, and um, non-plans, I, yes, I want to enable the ability to have GCC as a shared library on the host, um, but I don't want to change the outwardly visible behavior of the code so that um, none of the test cases should break. Um, in terms of code generation, all those behaviors should be the same. I don't want to change the license. That's not what I'm asking for. Um, and. I don't want, and yeah, so there's basically the classic use case, which I call the monolithic binaries use case, where you have your GCC, your CC1, CC1+, and all of that, versus shared libraries. And I don't want to change the measurable performance of the classic use case. So I want to have the same code base can be built either as one or the other without impacting the measurable performance of that. There will be a performance hit of that relative to the, the shared libraries relative to the monolithic binary, so if, if, even if only because we have um, uh, position independent code. Um, and similarly, um, so that was that slide, but similarly, um, I don't want to impact the, the requirements for people doing it. So for example, I don't want to require you use link time optimization in order to be able to get back the performance uh, because Link time optimization is relatively new. There are big memory requirements of using LTO as it went for when you build, build a GCC. Similarly, I, my plan does involve adding thread local storage for, for use when you're doing a shared library build of GCC, but I don't want to add that requirement to the classic use case configuration when you do a build. Um, oh yeah, and this was the, if we did want to turn GCC into enabled JIT compilation as a shared library, embeddable 
shared library. Um, th this is merely what I, I think it's necessary, but I don't think it's also I don't think it's sufficient. Um, we would also need to have an actual ABI, API and ABI with some actual stability guarantees that we could offer people um, uh, to, to make it attractive to use compared to, say, another um, compiler tool chain. Um, another, it would be um, currently all GCC ultimately emits is assembler, and you don't want assembler. You want to be able to off send your internal representation to this compiler engine and get back a void star to whatever that you can call directly in your process. Um, so we could do the whole fix global state in bin utils to talk for, um, in the next room. But, no, um, the, the, uh, but um, I, I, I can think of ways, easier ways of doing that if I were to build a JIT. And similarly, if you were doing um, JIT compilation, you would want to pick maybe a subset of the current passes because you wouldn't want to pick the most expensive passes to do because why spend lots of compile time when it's the same budget as your runtime, uh, when it's just in time. And also build one, um, because people won't they do it. They'll just continue to use a certain four-lettered other compiler tool chain. Um, and um, so what is the scale of the problem? So I wrote a, um, a custom pass to identify usage of non-const global variables. This is actually a, a Python script using, Tom, you have a question. Is that script available? That would be useful. This, this script, the script, uh, yeah, to find, it yeah, it's, um, so I actually posted, I posted these results to the GCC, the main GCC list about, I wish I had a link on this page, um, and I posted a link to it, it's somewhere on, yeah, okay, um, yeah, and, and so basically I then, it's a Python script that runs as my, as supplies an extra pass that I use my GCC Python plugin, um, Balaji, you have a, is it possible for you to open a wiki page and put it in there? Um, it's the res yeah the script the script the script is available on my Fedora People page, oh. and the results from when I when I, the, I from here are available on uh, also available. I, I, but I actually sent them to the mailing list, and I accidentally I meant to just send the link, and I also actually embedded actually sent them as an attachment. Sorry everybody, because uh, they're big. Um, and um, yeah, so it, you basically do do a stage one compile with this additional pass injected via a plugin that records globals. And there's 3,500 global variables across the whole of the GCC, including all the support directories. Um, Unique global variables? Yes. And they're used in 100,000 sites. And I actually have in my document um, the, I went through the top 40 by usage count, um, so and with ideas of how you might see. So the top, the top one is, is from uh, yeah, record data. So that's basically um, recognizing in machine instructions for combining. Yeah, and so that's actually generated code, um, and um, and so on. So the top ones like dump file, C fun, um, so on and so forth. So I have. Um, yeah, um, so there's, but as I say, I, po I posted the script to the mailing list and I posted the results to the other spots to the mailing list. Would so the bottom 40 be a little bit easier because you go, oh, geez, you know, like, let's get rid of that. We can embed that. The top 40 are like, oh, that's a problem. Um, well, the top 40 are the one that are the most interesting in terms of interface issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing is that the, the number one is from generating the code. So, you know, you, you have to fix the generator. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so in terms of, where are we? In terms of, so the, the, it's, a, it's a big problem. I can, I, in, in, but the good thing about having an automated script for measuring the problem is we can do like a burn down um, chart of here we are and watch the number of globals hopefully go down and the number of usage sites go down, I hope, and probably jitter up a bit as other features as features land in, in trunk and so basically how do I, pro I I've got a proposal for how we go about fixing it and it's somewhat formed and I'm looking for feedback from the people more familiar with GCC than, than I um, so the idea is uh, multiple parallel universes of state uh, what I, call parallel, I like to call parallel universes some people uh, I'm just kind of bike shed are they universes are they contexts and um, whatever and then basically all global variables become somehow associated with a particular universe um, so that there are 
separate co one copy in this universe, one in another. And the way to do it is more C++, um, I'm afraid. Um, and the basis so basically finding logically related bundles of state of global variables and the, the, and, the, and the functions relate to them and guess what, they're classes. And in a classic monolithic build where, you, where there's just a single universe of state, these classes are singletons and then in the other kind of, kind of build there are multiple instances, one per universe. Um, and another issue is, well, how do we go about, this is basically going to be on a branch, uh, how do I go about um, just adding classes whilst, because there's, there's, there are several competing um, requirements in tension here, which is how do I minimize the risk of a, the pain of merger and the risk that it will get it's too painful to merge into trunk and, and also the ability to follow the project history and the change log and um, also modularity um, and, and then performance and, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of kind of trade-offs where I hope I'm kind of picking the right option and I kind of wanted to gauge people's facial reactions to some of these <laughs> slides. Um, so yeah, and the various tricks to yeah, maintain the performance of monolithic binaries versus minimizing patching and whilst actually achieving the goal of um, zero global variables, well actually one global variable, the global, um, in the um, main build. So where are we? I'm going to answer what Amy's backboarding patches. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, I, would, I would like you to not think about any kind of uh, tension between, um, you know, merge pain. Assume there is going to be merge pain and move on. Yeah. However, it the thing is, though, it will be my pain. So, so I have a, I have a direct interest in. What? You're doing this in front, aren't you? So that's. This is an interesting question. This is an interesting question because there are performance. <coughs> One of the issues is what about the, com the, the performance of the compiler when it's built? Um, because currently, how expensive is looking up a global variable versus finding that variable somehow and, and then using it? And maybe I should speak to show you some of the, the, the code ideas and we can talk, talk to that. Um, so how this might look is we have class universe and we can do a bike shetty discussion about is it con GCC's context, is it GCC's universe. I kind of liked context and I started liking universe and I'm going back to, I'm kind of feeling universe might be a bit too, have too much hubris about it. Um, there is, it has its own heap. So there's kind of, in terms of the garbage collected heap, do, do we have one big heap and all of the contexts or universes share it and, they aren't, and you're shaking your head and I agree. I think because <coughs> The way the garbage collector is structured, garbage collection can only happen at certain set times. We don't support on stack routes, um, or at least we allow people to have trees that are effectively on the stack. Uh, but we say, well, they're not GTY marked, we just have to make sure that a collection never happens. So we, if we wanted to have one big shared heap, we would have to have all kinds of synchronization to ensure that every context that was using the heap was collaborating. I think it's much easier just to say every heap is unique to a particular universe. I think that better even when you're running a jet, you don't necessarily want the jet to, to stop the other course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the only issue though is that you, every pointer that's of a GC type has to be you can't freely share pointers between the universes, which is why I started calling them universes, because I got all sci-fi. Um, and um, so, so this is the model. Every, every context has its own heap. Um, and similarly, call graph object um, representing the call graph, everything gets moved into a class. There's a singleton, in, there's an instance within the universe of that. Um, you'll notice that there are, from a performance point of view, there are indirections here. And that's because we otherwise, the universe.h will become this horrible rats, into rat's nest of inter, well, hash include everything, basically, and everything would have to change every time you change, we'd be recompiled every time you change anything. So there's an indirection, like here, everywhere. Um, and so there's potentially a performance implication there. Um, so in terms of the other classes, there's a pipe pass management, there's a new pipeline class, so that rather than being a single instance of here's the, here are the passes and they're wired up with sub and next and so on, there's basically an instance of that per universe. Similarly, options, hopefully we can do something in terms of a front-end, back-end split, 
and and here again, there's this whole tension between do we like there's, when I posted this on the mailing list, I think it was Joseph Myers was wanting me to or can you was asking me call can you clean up the clean up the dump API, and I was thinking well actually I'd rather just stick the dump file dump flags in here and then keep that kind of orthogonal in terms of the state removal to that. But I, it's kind of, I, I don't really know exactly for each one, do we cl do a clean up of this API or do we just stick it in there? So for example, input location. I know we want to kill input location, um, but it's may as well just stick. You would make you kill the location, right? <laughs> right. Now put that, and then, you know, now I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, or David, you're, you're, you're thinking of putting all of the globals in, in one, no, no, I'm thinking of having a single root, as it were. So currently we have everywhere you, there will be, there basically this is kind of a nexus from which you can reach the other glo the global variables. So for example, things relating to the front, front end, for example, the, 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 the trees would be in here. And things relating to um, RTL um, re instruction recognition might be in, in here. But there are some here that really are just really global because we just use them everywhere. How are they allocated? Hmm? How are the actual variables allocated? Um, basically, toplev.c becomes very, very different to how it. Uh, and um, because toplev.c has basically got a, a lot of. It, it holds all the initialization. And I've only done one of, one of. Really done one of these so far, which is basically the initializing passes with a new pipeline. And in fact, it's new because uh, it's um, C++. Um, and um, you, so I would imagine top left dot C would change a lot and become, here's how you bring up a new universe instance and, um, uh, and, so, and so forth. Um, now, where, don't like the last thing. Which, towards the bottom? The special cases for each. Yeah, but. Uh, let's let's talk about identify. yeah. Let, let's talk about let's talk about pass per pass state. Um, so um, passes become C plus plus classes, and uh, so what? I, what I, in the current incarnation of a patch, there's the basically metadata about a pass becomes a new const static pass data instance, which looks a lot like the current parts of the pass without the a function callbacks and without the sub next wiring up of the, of the, of the pipeline. Um, I added a has gate and has execute bools um, because often you test if gate equals equals zero or is non-zero. And because on the next, th well, basically gate and execute become virtual functions, which is pretty much the only place I'm adding virtual functions in this plan. Well, actually, if execute, if you have gate, it returns true always. Can the base class return code? No, because it has logic based on. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, I mean the. Oh, oh no, the but default. but there's places in the code where you are where it asks whether the gate callback is null or not, compared to I whether the it returns. Possibly, I was just going for minimally invasive. Oh, maybe no, dumping's about the name now. Well, yeah, the name. Come back to, to the yeah. Point. yeah. He's, he's dealing with minimally invasive. Okay. He doesn't want to try to tackle fixing every pass that, that checks that those things and does something different. Right. Which yeah. I think are like easy. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, so the, the basically the few places I'm, I'm using virtual functions are, yeah, gate and execute virtual functions so that we have type safety um, primarily um, uh, so that you know, say, that pass VRP's execute hook knows that it's been given a pass VRP instance and therefore after I have an initial, I have a script that basically reconverts the whole tree, and that works, and that, and that compiles. Um, there's also a clone method for. There's, I think there's 219 <coughs> passes, and there's th most of them are single instance within the pipeline. There's only one instance of them, but there's about 30 or 40 that have multiple instances, and I think. Um, copy propagate is the record is the is the leader with eight instances in the, in the pipeline, and there are several patterns of of state uh, per pass. Um, there is there's some there's some passes that have no internal state at all. They just affect the functions flowing through them. Uh, and when I talk about global state, yeah, I, I mean the, what we want is the the state within the, the functions flowing through the pipeline, not within the pipeline itself. Um, so. 
Um, so there's some that have no state at all, that's wonderful. There's some that already just pass around some custom struct that gets passed around everywhere within their, their source file. Um, there are some which have what I call per invocation state. So at the top of the execute hook, um, so in tree foo.c, I, can't, I mean, I'm trying to remember a specific concrete example. Tracer.c is, the, is actually the, 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 the example we were playing with on the mailing list. Um, Tracer.c has three global variables, static variables. So you had your hand up? No. So, so Tracer.c has three variables in, that are static within, within that file. And so obviously they are, well, they're global in the sense of the lifetime of the process and they're in the BSS section and all that. Um, uh, now, um, they are initialized at the top of the execute hook and torn down at the end of the execute hook. So every time a function is, is done. So essentially, we can put that on the stack. Um, we could put that on the stack and, and then and a nice logical way of doing that is to bundle all of that into, into a state class and make the methods and make the functions within tracer.c that use that become methods of that state class. And and, yeah, so that, the problem with that is that the, the ones that I mentioned tracer.c because none of them are GTY marked. None of those three are GTY marked. But if the ones are GTY marked, we have to go back to this slide. And unfortunately, I haven't got it on this slide. The other virtual functions I have in the opt pass class are the GTY, GC, GTY, MX, and NX hooks. So the idea being there's a base, base class implementation for how passes mark themselves. Um, and potentially that can be overwritten, overridden so that passes can own references on um, GC objects or can own a, own a reference on a state class. Um, and then, and then can ensure that that state instance is traversed, and the clone method exists so that if there are multiple instances of a pass within one universe, and they want to share state within the, between themselves, but not within their cousins in another universe, um, then the clone method basically says we can wire things up so that the first instance of a pass that's created. Um, it is created, then all other instances within the pipeline are cloned from that first pass so that they can ensure that any, in the clone method you do any wiring up that's necessary. And then the virtual MX and NX hooks ensure that those, anything that you're owning and want to can get traversed during garbage collection or by pre-compiled headers. Um, so the other patterns of state, um, yeah, so that's the idea where you can have a private um, um, you, ha you have a class that's private to say tree foo.c and it's shared by say the four instances of pass foo um, and so that state is bundled up and, and, it, and basically has the same lifetime and same behaviors as before so because I'm basically looking at touching every single pass here um, and um, but it's different from the, another universe within the same process um, and so um, uh, and then there's finally, there are some parts of state which are just an internal API. Um, so, and I'm trying to think of the examples here. Um, where are we? Down here. Yeah, Mudflap is bizarre and has a bunch of, um, has, has a bunch of um, uh, things that get preserved. There's the data flow stuff and so on and so forth, where the state that's just shared. Um, I don't, yeah, so um, do, we, yeah, do we get proper C++ support in GT, in, in general? What I've been doing is marking everything with GTY user and, uh, and, and doing that. And I ran into problems with that with, um, uh, I have it working for garbage collection, but not yet for pre-compiled headers. And maybe it, uh, the, re the reason for that is basically an optimization. Um, so every, univ every pass instance knows which universe it's in. It's constructed with one, which it pass it's basically owned in the base class. Uh, so anytime you're in an execute hook, you know you have a nice handy universe method, so universe reference, so that you can look up 
some item of data, for example, input location. Um, the way LLVM does this is it puts the context point, it puts a context pointer into every type instance. So every type instance has uh, like an extra pointer, so it has a pointer saying, well, this is actually the, because you've always got a type handy. Um, and I suspect that it isn't going to fly in terms of memory requirements for GCC, because how many types do we have in a template build? I don't know. Um, the, what, uh, uh, how do people feel about adding an extra pointer to the... An extra pointer to a, a bundle type to your plugin kit resistance. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I... I yeah, I know. I'm not planning to add it there. So one one idea was to add it to um, like the scope of a type or context of a type, and but that involves non-trivial work doing it. So the, basically, the two approaches are: there's a reference at the, in owned by every pass instance. So when you're kind of near the top of code handling a pass, you you're always pretty close to being able to find your universe. But also, just there's a ton of macros and and, and things where you don't have any obvious context. So in the shared build, put it in thread local store. And in the non-shared build, there is a single global universe, G, which will in fact be the final global variable when I kill all the global variables. It is the global. And I called it something else to begin with, but it, I got sick of typing it in GDB. So G is, is the global. Um, and, uh, and then there's a macro to get at the universe for the places where you don't really have a lot of context and you want to, OK, where am I? Which, what, what universe pointer am I in? Well, I have a question. When Tell me. you go to really turn this into a library, a name like G. Uh, ah, but it's not in the library bill. Well, even a name like G pointer, is, are you going to namespace it? No, I can namespace it in the, in the bill. Well, the in other the thing is, you could probably make it uh, hidden. Right. Oh, well, maybe not. Like, do you want to ask? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to know what your plan is for visibility. My plan is, yeah, yeah. Namespaces are good, um, and yeah, we can put it in a namespace, and then in here. I mean, the macro isn't. It's a macro, so mac namespaces are all out. There's no need to have different names, though. You could make it. You could always have a unique pointer, just in the non-shared build, you could initialize it to the address. Yeah, yeah, and the. Maybe you don't need the uh, I'm sorry? Then you don't need the macro. Because you don't need the macro. That's an indirection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Unique pointer could also be a define to address of G. That's true. Which would yes. fall yeah. away immediately. Yeah. Um, I would prefer not to have a big, huge thing like that universe. Mm -hmm. I would prefer that if we have G, you know, everything just write G dot. And in a shared build, um, G is defined to star unicorn or whatever. OK, OK. Um, because G dot is, is going to take up the least amount of typing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, well, the, the other thing is. No, go on. Um, there's also the other level of uh, indirection. Having the things in the universe be pointers, and you could uh, uh, have you know much the same programming model, but have get, get rid of that interaction too by having um, you know instead of method pointers, having uh, instead of, of uh, you know, members that are pointers, have uh, methods that return pointers, and in the in the traditional monolithic build, those are just returning the address of, you know, G dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and get rid of that. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. And, and then, and if you do things that way, then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't know whether this is, is good or bad, but it doesn't even have to be G dot. Yeah. You know, C font open close, or it could be, you know, pound to find C font, so they don't change anything. Yeah. There's, a, there's an optimization actually in the successive slides. Well, you know, you've seen this optimization. Um, there's, there's, one, there's one issue here uh, as well, which is that if G in the single state build is in the BSS section, um, as I understand how PCH is currently implemented, you can have heap allocated objects, 
constructs classes, you can have scalars outside the um, that space that in that can interact with PCH with if they're marked. Yeah, and there are pointers outside that space pointing in, but you can't, as I understand, and PCH will, will successfully ser compact and serialize and then deserialize and then write back out that type of thing. But as I understand it, it doesn't yet support, and we'll probably because I don't want to touch that, um, support putting actual, like an, a universe, you know, an actual thing with fields in that space. Um, yeah, so it may have to be that that's a universe star G. Right. Uh, in various special cases, mm -hmm. the PCH code already. Yeah, the string pool. The only object you have yeah. would not be part of it. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was my thought. We already have a special case for string pool. The idea is that we can only have however many routes for the garbage collector. The idea is that will trend downwards until this is the single route uh, into, into the, the space. Um, and so, yeah, there's the whole, like, merger pain versus doing it properly. Like, so, for example, the time var API, where there's 200 odd uses throughout the code. Do I just add in a macro, set a family of macros? No, versus doing it properly, like changing every site to there. You would, you, so you would prefer I did this? G yeah. Well, the reason it's uni is because we're, I assume we're near the, the jump labels instance has a uni reference, so it's wow. looking up. Um, so it's going to a. It's actually that is this indirection uni dot blah. So there's actually several indirections to find the time bars at this point. Yeah. If, if I could forbid the use of found and find, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and, and so go back. Go Please, I think the, the time bar thing, if, if decision make is just do it, then we just do it. Yeah. There's no reason for that to wait at all. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like this part of your this part of your plan seems like an independent patch series. To me, it seems like a nice cleanup. And why wouldn't it just go in? Yeah. That's what I think too. Yeah. Interesting. That this kind of yeah. thing. Just, okay. I mean the whole like pass. Well, and I think that was ready to go with the exception of the GTY PCH issue. Yeah, yeah, and the, and, the, and the issue there was because I was attempting to do it with this rather than with star there. Yeah. You have a script, a Python scripting expert helping you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I spoke about the interaction between garbage collection and precompile hairs and all of that. So yeah, I have it working for um, so that passes can own garbage collected uh, garbage GC references, <coughs> and the traversal happens via the special case universe through the pipeline through the passes and stuff. Came up. But I don't yet have it working for PCH because of that distinction I mentioned before, and I think if I switch it to universe star G, then that gets GTY marked and becomes the single, ultimately, GTY marked thing. What about GC roots and uh, front ends, targets, and in plugins? Mm. Ah, well, yes, that's an interesting question. Um, I, yeah, pl plugins, I have... Uh, now we don't care about plugins. Yeah, I don't care about plugins. Oh, wait, I maintain one. Oh, uh, crap. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. Oh, 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 the irony. Oh, the irony. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll have to think about plugins. <laughs> no, the, um, the, the point being, though, if we have a thread local um, universe. Pointer when plugins get, I would prefer to avoid changing the. <laughs> given that register plugin is the one symbol in GCC that is supported to pl for plugin authors to write, I would prefer not to break its API. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he said snidely. Um, so the point being, if you have this thread, if this becomes just G and is thread local in a shared build then um, when in your 
pl is it plugin in it or whatever it is? I, is, I wrote the initialization code two years ago, but there, there's a specific named hook that gets called for a plugin. It can look up using this variable and know what universe it's in. Um, we could set up plugin initialization to, it gets perhaps called once per universe. And I don't, and then you're responsible for, and then basically we could say plugins don't have to, plugins, initial, no, initially no plugins will support the shared build because no, none of the rest of GCC supports it. Um, but we could then, and then say, well, if you want to support it, you have to look it up here and in, somehow ensure that your state is done here. And the way I interact in my plugin with a garbage collector is I just hook into, there's a event you can hook into and supply callback saying, I'd like to do some marking now. Um, I don't know to what extent anyone else and I believe Melt very, very heavily interacts with the garbage collector. And I just, but uh, Basil is not here, I believe. So, no. okay. So I guess I would want to run that past him. But on the other hand, he can continue to use. Um, I get. I mean, we can keep the machinery around. I mean, I'm not, uh, I, we can continue to use the in the non-shared build the same mechanisms. I guess. Yeah, um, it's just if you want to put a plugin into a shared library, well, wow, that's new functionality we haven't got. Yeah, yeah. And then the other part of the question was front ends, but I don't know if there's yeah. something special, anything special for front ends. Is that for Yeah, um, I'm not sure I get the distinction. I mean, if I want to do it to the front end, the middle end, the back end. I mean, it's the. Well, you have this universe class, um, so if you want to accommodate. Uh, end front, as it seems you would need end pointers to the respective separate data structures. When somebody comes along with a new front end, then you can't you plug it in, you need to change your universe class. Um, yeah, I mean, the way I had it in um, here is there's basically a class hierarchy of front ends. So there's um, um, there's a front end base class, C family front end. CP front end kind of class hierarchy, and then you have an instance of the of of one of them um, there. Um, but I, this, is, this is wishful thinking at this point because I haven't written the code, uh, I haven't done the, the refactoring. Uh, you wanted to have multiple front ends in one address space or within one universe. Okay, we are almost out of time, uh, so uh, maybe I, mean, I, I yeah. have like twelve slides. Yeah. Um, where was I here? Yeah. So. There was a whole bunch of optimization ideas. So performance, um, yeah. So I don't want to add any new fields to any major structs in the code tree. So I, I don't anticipate memory usage significantly changing. Um, there is immediately a performance hit for turning on um, position-independent code. So obviously it's going to be a configure time thing, or is it enable host shared or yeah, whatever. something, whatever, bike shared. Um, and the, but then there's the whole we're passing context pointer around because there's this implicit this everywhere and there's lots and lots of new dereferencing that are going on so that will be things so this basically I think needs to happen on a I guess on a branch and then measure performance relative to um, well, I think also we talked about a couple of details but I, I, I think we went through cases you could structure this such that statically at compile time you could or the you know Traditional case, you could completely eliminate all of those. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's. Don't so, think it's so, it, so if the universe star G is a const universe star G, for example, in the. Oh, sorry. Universe const star or whatever. So it's known to be. A, the pointer is known to be at the. Always point to the universe, which is a BSS allocated, say. Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, I, so, okay. so I, I just mean traditional compilation yeah. of, you know, you have getter methods for getting each of these pointers, and yeah. in one, you know, configuration, they're just in line to return the address of global variable, and the other one, they're an accessor to your universe object. Yeah. You know, and you can do that at multiple levels and do yeah. that Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, and the optimization I had was, uh, I first was looking at, well, was looking at was introducing this maybe static macro. Thanks, Diego, you'll love more. Uh, yeah, and the idea being that, say this is the call graph class, there's this maybe static, 
and in a multiple universe world, well, that's a horrible mixed metaphor, um, then these are truly, there are this pointers everywhere, and there are multiple instances in terms of the data fields. But in a classic build, these become static, and the this pointers all go away, and we're back very, very closer to our old world of just functions, and those data members are also maybe static, suddenly become, go back into BSS. And we do all this work to find the universe, find the core graph, and all of them are just empty objects. And all the real the store is back in the BSS section. So this is sort of Potemkin village of chasing pointers around that can all be optimized away at um, compile time. And I then looked at, if this is kind of tedious putting in maybe static. So there's an attribute for static that I posted to GCC patches of a couple of weeks ago. And the idea is you would do singleton and static build, and that would implicitly inject static into all the fields and give you that for stage two and stage three, because it wouldn't be recognized in stage one unless you were, yeah, or somehow magically already had that attribute. And the other idea was a singleton instance. So you would say, class call graph, there's the call graph, and it's a singleton static build, that's its instance. Um, and I have a vague, no, I have a half working implementation of that, but that's a much deeper patch to the C front end, whereas this already works, basically. But it's an extension, and you, you were hating Even the. the next one's an extension, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, high, going back to a high level uh, in terms of what I was looking for from Corgin, like, do people like this idea, or these ideas broadly, and where. How should we go about doing it? But I think we're running out of time, aren't we? No, so, yes, it's desirable, and I think you plan to do as much as you want, as you can in front, because it's going to make your life more hard otherwise. Mm -hmm. and, and the point here is to make your life easier. Yeah. yeah. My, my life easier. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, yes, it's a significant change, but we are early enough in, in the Fortnite series Cycle that. Yeah. yeah, though we've only got like, I mean, the end of October for stage one, right? And so there's three, the, I mean, there's three and a half thousand globals. There's how many can I do a day? <laughs> what? what are you doing here? You should be drinking that beer. There's some things that should just start going in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and it makes your life easier in the long run. Yeah. Because, because it, it's less stuff you're going to have to carry around. Mm -hmm. and, that's for, that, and that's why I want to see the past stuff get, get finished and then in. Yeah. Well, I think the PCH issues will go away if I do it universe star G rather than universe yeah, that's right. G. Um, because then that's GTY marked and that becomes the single. And then we just use the existing infrastructure for GTY marking and it becomes the, eventually the only GTY marked thing. Yeah. Uh, or global. So are we out of time or do we, oh yeah, uh, what nasty problems have I missed? Um, but, uh, yeah. 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 This may not be enough. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I mean I have a question which is in terms of benchmarking compiler performance, the number one benchmark I saw was how long does a Linux kernel take to build? How long does GCC take to build? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, CC went files or somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, what most people do is we, we collect a bunch of we we, we build CC one with safe temps that gives us like gazillion .i files mm -hmm. and, and everybody has their own <laughs> and we just kind of stuff them away and we use them every time we need to do you know how does how does this particular change impact how GCC builds right okay and it's it's yeah. a proxy it's close yeah bootstrap is going to be a good indicator mm -hmm. okay okay yeah but your maybe static idea is problematic because most times people are going to build for the normal case mm -hmm. and then it's going to be it'll, then your static methods will always be invocable in the unusual shared case they will become uh, non-static methods and then you'll have to have an instance to invoke them on yeah yeah where's that instance going to come from it's going to be very easy for people to write the call without providing an instance yeah it'll work for them until someone tries to do this shared thing. In which case, yeah, that, 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 this kind of touches on the issue. We've basically doubled the space of con configuration space, and 
currently people send patches and their, their requirement is that they bootstrap on a machine that's handy, right? And is it, it's probably too onerous to say, can you bootstrap both with and without this option? Right. Yeah. So whatever you do has to be, what, what somebody would, what, what you can get away with in the monolithic case has to still work in the shared case. So if you don't have well, this to hang on. I, I think we can tell, tell people that uh, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't call these, yeah. these functions with uh, just a class scope function. They should yeah. always call it with, with an object. And, well, and uh, it'll work. Uh, uh, well, well, right. Cool. Okay. Yeah. What we could do is, how would it be to in require ben a bootstrap with the enable shared or enable host shared? Yeah. Okay. But one thing you could consider is. Could we build stage two with enable share? Um, well, the staging is cheap relative to the test. Building another stage, yeah. you're talking five minutes. It's the make check. I still have to tie the text to build all of that up. That's like a thing that if you. If it, if it gets tested once a week and yeah, fix your break, it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah. If, if, yeah. if we were to introduce an extension to get that, then the extension could require an object or the call to It seems like this is an argument that's an option three where you have a, 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 a singleton object and an attribute. Because if you have the singleton object approach, don't you just require the same? And I don't mm. Maybe, but it's, it's harder a, to implement. But it's, it's much more so, difficult to implement. So <laughs> you can do this. You can do the same thing. 